We've seen previously that aldehydes and ketones can react with reducing agents such as sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride or with Grignard reagents. In order to review these topics, it may be useful to go back and re-watch the videos on the Grignard reaction of aldehydes and ketones and the reduction of aldehydes or ketones with sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. In this video, we'll see that carboxylic acid derivatives can also engage in some of these reactions. Sodium borohydride is too weak of a hydride donor to reduce carboxylic acid derivatives. However, lithium aluminum hydride, which is also sometimes abbreviated as LAH, is a strong hydride donor and can reduce these compounds. For example, esters may be reduced to alcohols by treatment with LAH. The reaction with Grignard or organolithium reagents is very similar. Instead of adding two equivalents of hydride to the carbonyl carbon, two equivalents of a carbanion are added to the carbonyl carbon instead. This yields a tertiary alcohol with two identical alkyl groups. Now let's take a look at the mechanisms for these processes. Let's begin with the reduction of carboxylic acid derivatives using lithium aluminum hydride. The reduction of esters with lithium aluminum hydride begins with the nucleophilic attack of hydride on the carbonyl carbon. For a review of why hydride is nucleophilic, you may wish to refer back to the video on the reduction of aldehydes or ketones with sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. During this nucleophilic attack, the pi electrons are displaced onto oxygen, thereby forming a tetrahedral intermediate. The subsequent collapse of the tetrahedral intermediate expels an alkoxide as a leaving group and yields an aldehyde. The aldehyde is not, however, the final reaction product because it can be further reduced by lithium aluminum hydride. The addition of a second equivalent of hydride to the carbonyl creates a tetrahedral intermediate that has no reasonable leaving group and therefore must simply persist until workup. The workup involves adding either water or aqueous acid. In either case, both alkoxides are protonated, yielding two alcohols as the final reaction products. The reaction of esters with Grignard reagents is nearly identical. The only difference is that instead of adding hydride to the carbonyl carbon, a carbanion is added to the carbonyl carbon instead. For a review of why Grignard reagents act like carbanions, you may wish to refer back to the video on the Grignard reaction of aldehydes and ketones. The reaction begins with the nucleophilic attack of the Grignard reagent on the carbonyl carbon. Pi electrons are pushed onto oxygen as a result, and a tetrahedral intermediate is formed. The subsequent collapse of the tetrahedral intermediate expels an alkoxide leaving group, and a ketone is formed as a result. The reaction does not stop at this point, though, because ketones are reactive with Grignard reagents as well. Consequently, a second equivalent of Grignard reagent attacks the ketone carbonyl. As pi electrons are pushed onto oxygen, a tetrahedral intermediate is formed that bears only extremely poor leaving groups, and consequently, this tetrahedral intermediate simply persists until the reaction is worked up. 
The workup entails treatment with water or aqueous acid. And in either case, both alkoxides are protonated and two alcohols result. The tertiary alcohol is usually the product of interest in such reactions. On this slide, we see a specific example of the reduction of an ester with lithium aluminum hydride. In this case, methyl cyclopentane carboxylate is reduced by lithium aluminum hydride to cyclopentyl methanol. Methanol is also produced as a byproduct. The reaction begins with the attack of hydride on the carbonyl carbon. Pi electrons are displaced onto oxygen as a result, and a tetrahedral intermediate is formed. This tetrahedral intermediate collapses as methoxide dissociates from the substrate, and this yields cyclopentane carbaldehyde as an intermediate in the reaction. Cyclopentane carbaldehyde is merely an intermediate because it is susceptible to reduction by lithium aluminum hydride. And this occurs when another equivalent of hydride attacks the new aldehyde carbonyl carbon. Pi electrons are displaced onto oxygen and the resultant alkoxide is a tetrahedral species with no good leaving groups and so it persists until workup. The workup leads to protonation of both alkoxides formed during this transformation, and this yields the two alcohol products, cyclopentyl methanol as well as methanol. On this slide, we see the same substrate, methyl cyclopentane carboxylate, being treated with two equivalents of ethyl magnesium bromide to produce a tertiary alcohol after workup. The reaction begins with the attack of ethyl magnesium bromide on the carbonyl carbon. As pi electrons are displaced onto oxygen, a tetrahedral intermediate is formed, but that tetrahedral intermediate subsequently collapses and expels methoxide in the process. A ketone is formed, but this ketone is subject to further reaction with the Grignard reagent. A second equivalent of ethyl magnesium bromide attacks the ketone carbonyl carbon, again displacing pi electrons onto oxygen. The tetrahedral species in this case bears no good leaving groups, and as a result, it persists until workup. During workup, both of the alkoxides are protonated. The product of interest is the tertiary alcohol, bearing two identical ethyl groups. These ethyl groups were added during the course of the reaction. This product of interest is accompanied by methanol as a byproduct. There are some related reductions that are worth noting. For instance, carboxylic acids may be reduced to primary alcohols by lithium aluminum hydride in much the same fashion as esters were. Amides and nitriles are similarly reduced. However, they yield amines instead of alcohols. Additionally, there are related Grignard reactions that we should note. Acid chlorides or anhydrides can also undergo the addition of two equivalents of a Grignard reagent. And the mechanism is directly comparable to that seen with esters. On the other hand, Nitriles yield ketones when treated with Grignard reagents. And this reaction deserves some further comment. The Grignard reagent attacks the nitrile carbon and pushes a pair of pi electrons onto nitrogen as a result. The anion that is formed in this process 
is resistant to the addition of any additional Grignard reagent. So the reaction stops at this point. During workup with aqueous acid, the anion is protonated to afford an imine. This imine is not isolated because it is subsequently hydrolyzed to form the final product, which is a ketone. If you're interested in reviewing the mechanism for this process, refer to the video on imine formation and hydrolysis. The complete mechanism for the hydrolysis of this imine is found in that video. In summary, carboxylic acid derivatives are subject to reduction by lithium aluminum hydride. Esters and acids are reduced to primary alcohols, whereas amides and nitriles are reduced to amines. Esters, acid chlorides, and anhydrides can also undergo reaction with Grignard reagents. Two equivalents of Grignard reagent are added to yield a tertiary alcohol with two identical alkyl groups. When nitriles are treated with Grignard reagents, a single addition occurs and a ketone is formed during the workup via hydrolysis of the intermediate imine. It's very helpful to remember that the reduction and Grignard reactions differ only in whether hydride or carbanions were added to the carbonyl carbon. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.